Hi, my name is Christian Fekete, and this presentation is about finding out what your processes are capable uh, with uh, the help of eBPF. On this slide, you can see an agenda. Basically, at the first, we will cover what is eBPF. Then we will take a look at capabilities. And at the end, we will see how you can integrate this into a proper, proper monitoring tool to get uh, some insights into your actual processes. As I mentioned, I'm Christian Fekete. I'm working as a field engineer at Solo.io. Um, previously, I was uh, working at an infrastructure SRE DevOps engineer. Uh, here at Solo, I really like to help companies to um, design um, service mesh solutions and um, solve their infrastructure uh, challenges. And I also really like to work with DBPF. Um, a few words. Uh, of Solo. Basically, we like to think about Solo as the next step in the cloud um, journey. As you can see, we are well-funded, we have tons of uh, satisfied customers, and we are using these leading uh, open source technologies to provide a really nice to use um, and scalable and secure um, platform to solve application networking challenges. So let's start with eBPF. What is eBPF? eBPF is basically a way to inject custom logic into the kernel, and with eBPF you can do it as a safe, fast, and flexible uh, manner. Um, the origins of eBPF can be the, dated back to the days of uh, TCP dump. If you are uh, in the game for long enough, you are most probably already use TCP dump to troubleshoot certain network-related um, issues. There are multiple eBPF use cases. Um, such as security, tracing, profiling, networking, and authority. In this talk, we will um, talk about uh, security and authority use cases, but all the other use cases are also quite interesting. Uh, but I think authority uh, is basically where eBPF can really shine. So it's quite natural to, uh, to uh, cover this use case regarding security, for example. On this slide, you can see my favorite uh, diagram related to eBPF itself. Um, basically, if you have an eBPF program, you have to have a user space and a kernel space program. The user space is what will handle the life cycle of the eBPF code that will be injected into your kernel. And uh, this is where you um, can basically interact with the problem. This is where this is what we, this is uh, the um, program that will display all the information that it's uh, that it interacts uh, extracts from the kernel itself. On the right hand side, you can see uh, the kernel box. Here you have a verifier step, and that's quite important because, as I mentioned, the eBPF enables you to inject custom logic into the kernel safely. So uh, with the help of a verifier, it's it's quite hard to, to crash an actual kernel with, uh, with these little experimental code snippets. So that's the first step when the uh, actual code is loaded into the kernel. Then we have the actual uh, BPF logic. It's an event-based logic, so every time a certain kernel event happens um, that can be related to kernel probes, user probes, k probes, u probes, trace point, or uh, certain other events. Uh, these can uh, trigger your actual logic, uh, kernel space logic that you injected into the kernel. Then, to be able to exchange the data between user space and kernel space, uh, we have the maps. Uh, these are um, data structures to provide uh, this uh, exchange between the two sites. Okay, so now that we know that we at eBPF is, uh, what are capabilities? You can see the official man page for capabilities here, but uh, I really like to have to show you a simplified version of of this. So uh, let's think of capabilities like this. Uh, these are basically aim to add superhuman capabilities to programs but without the need of using root user because you cannot root hopefully you, you are not using root user for everything i like to focus on these uh, words that are underlined here basically uh, capabilities can be quite dangerous as well because it can uh, give superhuman capabilities to our processes, and you don't actually need to use a root for that. So it's better to have proper monitoring for these capabilities. 
and uh, that's a concrete example of cap uh, of capabilities if you look into where the ping uh, tool uh, can be found on the uh, on your machine then you will probably see something like this um uh, in this case, uh, I have ping on that location. As you can see, um, the root user and the root group is assigned to it. And with get cap, uh, you can actually check what kind of capabilities this tool has. Uh, you can see that it has the capnet row capability attached to it. And you can also see that uh, I have a user called netroot um, and I'm able to use ping to ping localhost. So this is what basically capabilities can do, but what actually is cap net row in this example? I again fall back to the man page of capabilities and grabbed for the, uh, the specific capability. You can see that it can use row and packet sockets. It can bind to any address for transparent proxying. What does that mean? That means that basically the packets can be forged and the actual senders can be faked this way. And uh, if you take a look at the bind to any address for transparent proxying uh, line there, uh, you uh, can also guess that many neural attacks are, are possible this way. But that's not the uh highest power that you can have with uh, with capabilities there are others and uh, if you have processes using these capabilities um then that can lead to dangerous situations so let's take for example capnet admin you can see all the various operations that it will be enable for your processes basically you could have full control over your network interfaces you can alter firewall rules so it can be pretty bad, pretty bad if these uh, capabilities are abused so how would you monitor these capabilities that's not quite easy without ebpf but basically the kernel itself keeps track of all the capabilities uh, that your processes are invoking there's the cap capable function and uh, there's also a kernel probe attached to it so you just basically need to uh, watch out for this uh, kernel probe in your kernel and you want and you need to make this data available in the user space if you have this power basically you can understand really understand what capabilities are actually used by your processes and applications and uh, if you put some monitoring in place uh, based on this uh, information you can basically get notified uh, if certain applications are using capabilities that they shouldn't use you could think that okay but how would i get this capability i'm not a kernel engineer um the good news is that you don't need to be a kernel engineer. Kernel engineers before us uh, created tools to tackle these issues. On this slide, you can see the BCC collection. Uh, that's basically all, all of these are um, eBPF based tools that can uh, help uh, with you to solve various um, issues regarding for example your runtime schedulers or or network devices all of this has uh, tools already available for your use brandon greg uh, the guy who was working at netflix and uh, now he's at intel he's one of the most famous person of the ebpf um ecosystem and community he created the tool uh, called Capable, and basically he is monitoring. Uh, he was monitoring um, the Linux security capabilities uh, with this tool. You can see the output of that program. To uh, sort of modernize this application and to uh, make it uh, cloud native, we can use Bumblebee, which is an open source project by solo.io. Basically with this, you can build, publish, and run um, eBPF based uh, tools. And it can also turn into these tools, these events uh, to Prometheus metrics. Basically the, the promise is that you don't need to take care of the uh, user space code because that's not something that's very exciting um, but bumblebee basically lets you just reuse uh, kernel space code and it will generate the user space code for you and additionally it will in, uh, expose all the events um, uh, as uh, prometheus metrics 
The user experience is really nice. You can basically use Docker like comments like build run push to, to handle these OCI images. You can also take existing libpf tools uh, as, 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 a, as, uh, as an input to Bumblebee and you can um, port those to, uh, to, to Bumblebee itself and expose the metrics as uh, the events as metrics. If you go to this library, uh, this folder on, on the BCC repository, you will find two or maybe three uh, files per tools. And basically you just need to take care of the, the bpf.c version of the, of the tool. That's the kernel space code. The, all the other ones uh, should be uh, handled for you. So let's see this in action. Here you can see a virtual environment. I have a Kubernetes cluster up and running. You can see that I have three nodes. I have Bumblebee already installed. You can see these comments here. Now what we can do is that I already have a capable uh, of .c file uh, here. Basically this is the kernel space code. Here you can see what kind of information are we interested in for all the kernel events that can invoke uh, the cap capable call. And this is the map that we will use to exchange data between user space and kernel space. The generation of primitives matrix is quite transparent to you. So basically we have this dot counter suffix added to this map. And after that, all the data will be exposed as a counter. That's a Prometheus metric type. And that's it. Uh, after this, we can, now that you have the code, you can do something like be build reference the local file and compile it to an image. After this, we can push this to a local or remote registry. I have one running locally, so I will use that. And after that, I can uh, run the actual uh, program. program. Uh, for that, we have a text-based user interface, and um, this can basically show the output of, of the pro program. This is what we will expose as Prometheus metrics. So for that, let's uh, deploy Bumblebee as a daemon set. As, I, as, as you can see, I'm using a regular daemon set. Uh, I'm using the Bumblebee image. That's the same CLI that uh, I just uh, ran uh, a few seconds ago. We are actually working on an operator to make this uh, work better for Kubernetes workloads. Uh, so check out our GitHub repository to see the work uh, on that front. And I'm passing the OCI image as a variable, as, a, as an argument uh, to, to uh, this container. So this is already deployed. I can check the pods uh, that I have. I have three pods running. It's a daemon set, so I have one for every node. And now that we have this, uh, we also have Prometheus installed. And uh, you can see the data here. Basically, you can see that um, we have all the capabilities listed here. You can see these over time. It's a different uh, illustration to, to see uh, these actual capabilities. That's a histogram if you are interested in one of the most noisy capabilities that are being invoked by your applications. And here we are filtering for um, tasks that are actually using this. So let's say, for example, you are interested in uh, um, number 12 capnet admin. You can also use the selector filter for capnet admin, and you would see that uh, these applications, these processes are using these capabilities. You can see that one of them is uh, more frequent than, than other. So it's a quite nice way to, to monitor all your um, uh, capabilities that are being used, and you can set up alerting based on this because that's basically just regular Prometheus metrics. You can see the roadmap here. Basically, these are uh, the tasks that we have on our roadmap. We want to have tighter Kubernetes integration, new metrics types, uh, log support. So keep uh, this project in mind and uh, feel free to experiment with it uh, on our GitHub repo. You can also visit academy.solo.io where we have free open source, free workshops on all these open source technologies. For example, eBPF, you can find out more information about ambient mesh, which is also quite um, interesting and exciting. And we cover all other uh, open source project, uh, products, uh, projects as well. Feel free to join on our Slack as well. 
and um, I was happy to be here. Thank you for watching this session and uh, uh, feel free to reach out with questions.